You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, GH fans, we've got a comings and goings update for you with tons of info. Of course, you know, Spencer and Esme are dead and gone. Esme supposedly for good and Spencer just for a while until Nicholas Chavez is back to work on the ABC soap. But the funeral brings back familiar faces and a very unfamiliar face has fans scratching their heads. This is Belinda from Soap Dirt and we're going to unpack all the scoop, but please click subscribe subscribe if you haven't already. So they did what felt like a pretty abrupt ending to the Paris storyline. Two days of searching and then everybody packed their bags and said, oh, well, they're toast. And they came right back to Port Charles without the bodies of Esme or Spencer. The only positive sign we had was Spencer's little turtle dove washed up on shore. Obviously, we know Spencer survived. Heck, Esme might have as well. We'll see. Trina returned and ran right back to the dorm to see Jocelyn Jacks and cried her eyes out to her bestie about Spencer's untimely death at the hands of evil Esme. Then Jocelyn placed a call to their other good friend, Cameron Weber, to let him know that they had lost the Cassidyne heir. So William Lipton is indeed back for Spencer's funeral, which takes place next Wednesday, February 7th. Lipton's been gone off our screens since March of 2023. He stepped away from General Hospital to focus on his real life college studies. And then Cameron's exit was written on GH as him getting a mid-year scholarship to Stanford as if that actually happens. It doesn't, but okay. I guess it's a soap, so it's supposed to be somewhat unrealistic. When William Lipton left, we heard that he'd be back over the summer as Cameron when he had some spare time to film, but then that never manifested. With that in mind, I do not expect William Lipton to stick around long at all as Cameron Weber. I'm sure he'll see his mom and his brothers, pay his respects to Spencer's family, go to the funeral, spend time with Joss and Trina, and then head back to California with the explanation that he can't miss classes. So I would expect a few episodes, maybe even just one or two. And speaking of actor exits, Joshua Bernard, Maurice Bernard's son, is done as troubled young man Adam Wright. He had a larger arc that began in September 2023 and culminated in his suicide attempt and his plan to go start his life on a new path. And if you remember, we first saw Adam back in 2021, but it was just kind of here and there appearances, and he was kind of a campus creep who then evolved into something more. And speaking of people named Adam, that's the name of the new actor playing John Cates, a.k.a. Jagger. Adam Harrington has taken on the role that we've not seen on General Hospital since 1995. Antonio Sabato Jr. originated the role and also appeared as Jagger on Night Shift. That was that GH spinoff that was like from 2007 to 8. It was very brief. Just over a year, I think. I told you guys here a while back that I had had a leak that there were some returning characters, and one of them was a blast from the past that had been gone more than 10 years. If you listen to that video I reported, you may recall this. But I have to say just, wow, Jagger was not on my radar at all. For good reasons. Bringing him back feels random and unnecessary. So I have to wonder if this Jagger nonsense is part of what got the two recent ex-head writers kicked to the unemployment line of all the characters from the past to bring back. I mean, think about who you had to choose from. Alcazar, Olivia Jerome, Nell freaking Benson, Sky Quartermain. I mean, let's go way back. Grant Putnam. You know, any of them might have been fun. Jagger? I scratch in my head. So this new actor, Adam Harrington, he is also kind of a visual shock when you consider what Jagger used to look like. And it's likely why they're calling him John instead of Jagger to try and distance him from Sabato Jr.'s version of the character. But then 
what's even the point? Why not just bring in a new character? My fear right now, I smell umbrella plot all over this, and that is never a good thing. Whenever the GH writers start doing umbrella plots, you know it's going to be garbage because they're going to try to tie too many things in together. I think we're about to get Pikeman, the shooting, and Curtis, and who even, you know, Sonny, at just, it's going to be too much. That's my prediction for that. Maybe the new writers can come in and clean this up and stop it before it's too far gone. But for now, we've got John Cates, FBI agent extraordinaire with a new face and no longer using his nickname. By the way, over the weekend, Antonio Sabato Jr. spoke out and said, if the producers, who he didn't want to name, but we know who he was talking about, said, he said, if they don't want to use him because they don't like his politics, then that's more of a reflection on them than him. He insists he doesn't talk about politics or religion or other personal things at work that he just focuses on work. So he spoke at length about it and said, had they brought him back, he'd make General Hospital number one again, like he did back in the day. Um, I don't know about the math on that. To be fair, Young and the Restless has held the top spot for the past like three decades. And GH was languishing in the Nielsen ratings in third place, just above Days of Our Lives when Days was still on network TV. But once Days left and moved over to streaming, so it's not on NBC and it's not part of the Nielsen's anymore, General Hospital is now firmly ensconced in last place of the network aired soap operas. So maybe the new writers can reverse the ship because ratings have also been suffering for quite a while, for the, the past really several years, while the two fired writers were at the helm. So I'm excited to see the new writers work, but it'll be a couple of months from now, no doubt, before we'll actually see their scripts at play. We'll see, though. If the new John Cates actor looks familiar, maybe you've seen him on Bosch. That is a cop show that I like, and that's where I recognized him from at first. And then when I started looking at his resume, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. He was also on Station 19, which I don't watch, but he was on a freeform show that I really liked, a supernatural show called Shadow Hunters, and he was good on that. So I'm just going to basically forget that he's Jagger. I'm just going to call him John, and we're going to make the best of it because it's not the actor's fault, the ex writers we're grasping at straws and pluck Jagger out of nowhere for reasons I'm sure are not going to be that great. We'll see. Fingers crossed it makes sense. I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. Also back for the funeral, as we saw at the end of last week, is Adam Huss as Nicholas Cassidine, along with baby Ace. He stunned Laura Spencer by showing up at her door in tears over the death of his oldest son. The problem is Nicholas is a wanted man, but the crimes against Esme may not hold up in court because she's not around to testify against him. So maybe Laura can get DA Scorpio to drop the charges since her family has already suffered so much and jailing Nicholas would just make Ace an orphan. Of course, I, I don't know. I don't think Nicholas is probably going to stick around for that long, but you never know. I do like having Nicholas around, and I think if he stayed, I would eventually get used to seeing Adam Huss instead of Marcus Coloma. Marcus was such a good recast, and I feel like Huss just hasn't been given a chance to grow on a ship. We'll see how it goes. That's all the comings and goings I have for you in this update. Please click subscribe. If you haven't already, definitely drop your comments on all these ins and outs. Let me know what you think and come back soon. I am here talking GH with you guys seven days a week. And as always, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. <laughs>